Welcome to the Power Trends Podcast, produced by the New York Independent System Operator, where we discuss energy planning, public policy, and other issues affecting New York's power grid. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Power Trends Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Lanahan, Vice President, External Affairs, Corporate Communications at the New York ISO. And I'm delighted to be joined by Emily Nelson, our Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. Emily and I are going to discuss uh, distributed energy resources, new market design that we have implemented here, FERC approval. She's going to describe for us how we designed the DER market, what the benefits are, and why this is significant to the grid of the future. But first, Emily, it's been a while since we've hosted you on the podcast, so welcome back. And since you were here last, you've taken on a significant new role. Maybe it makes sense to reintroduce you to our listeners and talk a little bit about your background. But if you can describe for us this new role you have since the last time we hosted you. Good morning, Kevin, and happy to be here with you today. Uh, I am really excited about the new role that I have as Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. Certainly a great opportunity for me and the organization and very interesting and, and challenging work. My responsibilities encompass market operations, system and resource planning, market mitigation and analysis, and market structures, which is largely our project and design functions. What makes me so excited about having these particular areas as part of my organization, first and foremost, just tremendous people, really with the mission of the organization top of mind, but absolutely an opportunity to connect some of the long range planning that we're doing with the nearer term operational challenges as supported by the markets and make sure these things are working together and bringing us uh, closer to achieving the grid of the future. Emily, if you can remind us of your background, you have a degree from Tufts and you have a degree from Pace, but how did your career begin? Where did you get started? And then um, if you can detail for us your experience, career experience at the New York ISO. Sure. So I studied mechanical engineering as an undergrad, really with an interest in uh, stepping into energy. And my first opportunity was in power generation. So I was working in power plants. And that was a great opportunity to learn the industry, learn some of the challenges. And while I was doing that, I also went to Pace University at night. I got my MBA. And then pretty early in my career, I started at the New York ISO. That was back in 2004. So 20 years ago now. And I started in actually the market mitigation and an analysis team and really worked my way throughout the organization and up in, in responsibility since that time. Really fascinating work within this industry. You find a lot of people who are willing to share their insights and their experience, which is so critical for all of us. Okay. So the way you describe the new role, it's um, it's a combination of planning disciplines and operations. And so I think what we're going to talk about here in one respect fits neatly into that. Maybe we start with a description of what distributed energy resources are. And if you can tell us what qualifies as a distributed energy resource, and then we can jump into this new market design and why it's important. Absolutely. So distributed energy resources, which I will be referring to as DERs throughout our conversation, are typically smaller resources. They're behind the meter, and they often supply customers with electricity directly which offsets what must be delivered by the bulk power grid that we operate. Examples of DERs can include solar panels, smaller scale wind, battery storage, fuel cells, demand response, even potentially electric vehicle charging ultimately. Aggregations of these resources can be combined and ultimately dispatched as a single resource. And what this really provides is an additional value stream as they provide grid reliability services. And it provides additional tools and operations to try to meet the reliability function that we're responsible for. 
So with this new market design, we're incentivizing and encouraging that aggregation of those different resources, and then they're compensated in the marketplace. So maybe talk a little bit how that works. And you mentioned how it helps balance supply and demand, but it also hopefully gives some incentives for these resources to evolve further. That's absolutely right. I mentioned that oftentimes when you think about DERs, they have multiple purposes. So there might be something on their particular site that they're trying to achieve or serve, some local load, for example. But by creating an additional value stream and providing services to the bulk power grid, it's a way to encourage the investment in new technologies and also, most importantly, for the bulk power system operator for the New York ISO. It's a way to represent these resources, allow them to participate in the markets, really create an opportunity for them to provide grid services. And we're at a juncture in the grid transition where it's really important that we create these opportunities for the multitude of resources and emerging technologies to participate in our wholesale markets and value value them for the reliability services that they can bring. You mentioned up front that market design and the aggregation of these resources can help offset some of the fossil fuel-based generation. Maybe let's talk a little bit about that performance. How will we anticipate through these markets how much traditional generation we don't need in real time. I know that there's a lot of behind the meter solar that shaves the peak um, in summer days like today. How that works in the control room and then what we anticipate with this market contributing to that kind of uh, an offset. Kevin, you just mentioned behind the meter solar and it's one of the areas where we've seen significant growth through the past few years. We have an excess of 5,000 megawatts of installed capability with respect to behind the meter. Solar is something that we've built out our forecast tools to be able to anticipate the overall level of production. That's important. You mentioned conventional resources and how it fits in. What you can think about is the ability to forecast behind the meter solar allows us to commit and dispatch fossil generation in a way that provides the balance of energy that's needed in consideration to where the renewable output will be. So having visibility of where we expect all resources to really be producing on a given day helps us come up with the best commitment and dispatch to serve New York customers to meet the load. The distinction here with behind the meter solar relative to establishing distributed energy resources as part of the program and the wholesale markets is we're trying to create an incentive for them to come in front of the meter, if you will, rather than just working around them and these resources staying behind the meter. So if you think of some of that solar investment that has happened, and if there is an opportunity for resources to combine, such as having behind the meter solar, combined with demand response, combined with batteries, even though they may be smaller scale, in aggregate, they can provide grid services. And we want to make sure that the wholesale markets have these opportunities to allow this evolution of technology. And really, if there is the business case, to come in front of the meter, provide these grid services, that we're creating the market structure that allows that to happen. We get greater visibility into the performance. Exactly. So by having resources participate in our wholesale markets, be visible to grid operations, we are really giving additional tools to meet reliability. So having the telemetry, having the the after-the-fact performance assessments of how these resources responded to a schedule to a dispatch instruction is really important. And it's an important first step in thinking about how we integrate distributed energy resources to a greater extent. There's also some benefits here to making consumer demand more dynamic, responsive to market signals. I mean, that's the kind of grid and the kind of consumer behavior that we're anticipating with the grid of the future, right? 
That's absolutely right. So I would describe our philosophy as an ISO and how we're approaching market design is an all-in strategy, if you will. When we look at the clean energy policies of New York State, we really need to create a framework that allows investment in all technology options. One of the things that we see in our planning work, most recently, we released the System and Resource Outlook, or known as the Outlook. We see that the opportunity as you get deeper into the grid transition, looking out 2035 to 2040, that ability to manage demand will really impact the overall infrastructure that we need to build out, both on the supply side as well as the transmission side. So breaking that down into a tangible example, if you think about a fleet of electric buses, there is the opportunity through our market signals, uh, potentially supported through rate design by New York State, to encourage demand to be controlled based off of the time of day when it can best be supported by the grid. So, for example, when you think about a fleet of school buses, there is certainly value from a reliability perspective to encourage this fleet of buses not to charge immediately in the afternoon after bringing all the kids home after school, but rather delay that charging to later in the evening when the demand is not quite as high. So we are providing a mechanism to really think about how to combine these technologies and offer that capability into the wholesale markets, be part of the solution on the bulk power grid, as well as uh, really helping to manage the cost to these consumers by approaching charging in a really smart way. Flexible response, we're anticipating a more dynamic future system, and this market helps incentivize the kind of technologies that will depend on more in the future, but then also fill in some of those reliability needs that we're anticipating with that more distributed and intermittent system going forward. Absolutely. The system is getting a lot more complex. The challenge here is how do we make sure we're integrating the grid scale resources with DERs to serve the load, meet reliability, and it requires greater visibility, greater complexity through these systems. But ultimately, we've been building on the tools over the past two plus decades to get us to this point where we have the opportunity to create platforms for a multitude of technologies. So this was, uh, we were first movers, if you will, at the, at the New York ISO with this market design, at least getting approval for it at FERC. What has been the response so far and what do we... I know we're going to remain patient here, but what do we anticipate? We certainly worked with with stakeholders over a number of years to get to the point where we received their support and approval and ultimately approval from FERC to implement this program. What we're seeing at the outset is pretty consistent with our expectations. A benefit of the DER program and design is that it allows us to combine Some of our traditional programs where resources could only provide a single service, let's say providing reserves or providing regulation, and instead be part of the DER program and have the opportunity to provide all grid services, be it that reserve or regulation, energy, as well as capacity market products. So it's a much more fulsome way for resources to participate in our wholesale markets. So at this point, we're supporting the transition of resources into the DER program, and we're excited to see where it goes. We'll see if there is that opportunity for resources to really build out new business models and step into the DER program. I also anticipate that we'll continue to evolve how we approach DERs. This is very much a first step that we're taking here in in 2024. And I think it's an important step to learn how these resources combine and and participate in the markets and evolve things from there. Emily, I think it's probably important to uh, touch just generally on the importance of innovation and new market design ideas 
we're consistently looking at and discussing with the industry and policymakers the challenges that we have with the grid and transition and maybe some of the problems that need to be solved. If we can just talk a little bit about our role there, our responsibility and obligation to reform the markets and innovate the markets to support the new technologies and the policies going forward, how important that is. It's absolutely critical that we continue to evolve our markets. What we've seen is that competitive markets have a track record of minimizing wholesale prices and providing efficiencies into grid operations. This helps lower bills for consumers, lower emissions from the power sector. And as we've talked about throughout our conversation today, we need a variety of resources to support reliability across a large range of conditions, ultimately, to serve customers. Market design, market rules are something that need to continually change to evolve. And when technology is changing, the urgency of doing that is greater than ever. And that is one of our central responsibilities is to make sure we're creating platforms through our markets where these technologies can participate and provide reliability value to the grid and be compensated for for doing just that. Emily, I think that's a really good place to uh, end for this conversation, but we appreciate you coming back and spending time with us. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. As a reminder, the New York Independent System Operator, NISO for short, is responsible for reliably managing New York's power grid and energy markets and providing independent data to policymakers and the public. For more independent info, please visit the NISO blog at www.nyiso.com slash blog.